change and making smarter decisions. And we are now on live on Facebook. So I welcome everybody to uh, beautiful Forever University's first uh, Facebook Live and Zoom combination. So excited that I have some key opinion leaders here with me today. Um, Karen Hawkaway, all the way from New Jersey. And I feel like you're right in my office with me. It's so great. Um, and Dr. Jacob Steiger, um, we have a video and we have um, a checklist um, of what to do and how to handle going back to work. Um, Dr. Shino Bay will join us in a little while um, after you. And so basically, for those of you who don't know, Beautiful Forever uh, Consulting Firm and Beautiful Forever University are launching educational programs. And I don't see the slides, so I don't know if it's just us or, or the slides are just not on, but um, I'm not sure how to get them on. Uh, let's see, screen share, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so, Lindy's in charge of the PowerPoint. Okay, so now Lindy, you gotta get your whole screen up and then we'll be fine. Uh, the entire screen will be great. And so we're starting business tools and how to plan and relaunch successfully. So right now um, we're all here, we're live, it's happening. People are going back to work. It looks like the numbers of the virus are going down. So things should be moving very quickly. I wanna make sure as a consultant that you have your plans in place. We're here to answer any questions. Any questions or comments, please let us know what they are. Put them in the, in the box, put them in the post um, and let us know. Every week we will be doing um, hot topics, we can call it. Um, and, um, and they'll be on topics that you're most interested in listening to and learning more about. So please tune in every week to the Beautiful Forever University Educational Programs. And I do really want you to fill out um, the survey at the end. It'll take you about 30 seconds, but it would really help me and it would help everybody else um, that's watching to be able to give you what you want. These are free educational informational um, workshops. And um, I'm very excited to be here with you today. So Dr. Shino Bay, if you don't know him, um, he's a board certified dermatologist and dermatology, uh, dermatologist surgeon. And he's located in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He just opened um, this week and we'll hear about his challenges and obstacles as we will from Dr. Karen Hawkaway, who's a board certified dermatologist, has a Medispa cosmetic center. Um, and I've been to both of their locations and they're both amazing. Um, and they both are, are trainers and educators and you'll see that in their bios. Um, and Dr. Jacob Steiger is a board certified cosmetic plastic surgeon in Boca Raton who was lovely enough to give us some quotes and he gave us a video um, and um, he's happy to answer questions if something does come up for him and he's not here today. So I'm so proud to have our key opinion leaders here with us today at Beautiful Forever University talking about adapting to change. Um, I can't change the slides, but the slides will change. <laughs> so we're adapting to change um, and I've introduced our wonderful guests and um, now we're adapting to reopening obstacles. What about your staff? Do you take them back full-time or part-time? Um, the effect on your practice, overcoming patient fears. There's so many fears that we all have. I mean, I just recently went to the hairdresser for the first time because Florida opened up. I was wearing a mask and I was a nervous wreck the whole time. Um, but you know, it's the kind of thing where maybe if it's a new normal, we have to get used to it. I have to get a more comfortable mask. But you know, the patients have fears, your staff has fears, and also financing and financing options are a big deal right now because people are scared. They're lo losing their jobs or they're working less hours or their family members um, you know, are sick and they're caring for them and they can't work as much. Whatever the situations are, right now it's all about added value and financing options to me have always been so important. Um, and we'll talk about something new that's actually launching today which I'm very excited to be, you know, one of the first um, to be able to um, bring it to you. And um, the next uh, slide about Dr. Um, Jacob Steiger. Well, he um, has a lot of confidence, did a great video. Um, I know him for a long time, he's terrific. And um, he wants to keep his patients as you all do and the staff safe. So we're gonna listen to his quick um, video 
And um, I thought it was pretty good for those that haven't made videos yet, or for those of you that want to remake videos, this is something good to watch. And it's only a couple of minutes. The volume I can't hear, but maybe it's my computer. I can't hear the volume on that. Well, of course, when we tested it, you were able to hear it. No, we can't hear him at all. It's a YouTube video that we have the link to. Um, there we go. Great. Plastic surgery. Our commitment to safety is paramount. So there are five key steps that we have identified in order to keep all of our patients as safe as possible. Let's start with number one. The first thing is screening. We want to screen all of our patients for the virus. That means if you have any fever, cough, runny nose, symptoms that you may have a virus, even if they're very minor, you must let us know. We are always going to err on the side of caution rather than take any type of chances during this time. Two, adequate hygiene. As a surgeon and as a physician, it is very important for us to wash our hands many times a day before surgery, after surgery, and when we deal with patients, before seeing a patient and after seeing a patient, sometimes during as well. We maintain a special protocol on how to wash our hands appropriately that we have done throughout our entire careers. Our entire staff and team are trained on doing so. Gloves don't always help you. You have to practice adequate hygiene. Three, personal protective equipment, otherwise known as PPE. There are different types of PPE. This might include masks, gloves, drapes, gowns, hats, etc. It is very important that our staff is adequately and fully trained on using PPE in the proper way. We provide our staff and our team with all the PPE necessary to keep both you and ourselves safe. Four, providing a clean slash sterile environment. All of our rooms, our exam rooms and operating rooms are wiped down and cleaned with germicidal agent in order to provide the most clean and sterile environment possible. Our staff is trained at doing this and provided with the most advanced materials in order to clean the rooms. Five, air quality. Air quality is very important when it comes to surgical facilities because the air in the environment is continuously filtered out and cleaned of any bacteria and viruses. We have installed a similar type of technology in all of our exam rooms, common rooms, waiting areas that we have in our operating room. So our entire building is covered. This will help reduce any contaminants in the air and is filtered through the entire system many times per hour. All in all, we are taking all the steps to ensure that our team and our patients are kept as safe as possible. While we live in very interesting times, we have always maintained the highest standard for sterility and cleanliness within our office. We have further taken steps in order to make sure that you stay safe, that we stay safe, and that we can continue to provide you with the best possible care in facial plastic surgery that is available today. I hope you stay safe. And thank you, Dr. Steiger. That was great. And if you don't have a video or you need a video, that's a great one. And you could shorten it, you can lengthen it. Um, but I think it's great for your patients and for your staff before opening and during the opening time. You can have it on your social media, on your website, and um, you can make new videos now that you might be open for a week or so. There is a safety checklist, which is next. So this way you have a list just to view and review. And if you need it, we're happy to send it to you. Um, basically about the screening, the cleanliness, the hygiene, uh, appointments. How are you gonna handle appointments? Text messaging and people coming in? Well, we'll find out from our experts in a little while. Curbside pickup of products. Are people gonna come out? Are people gonna come in? There's lots of questions and lots of unanswered questions. And what works in one area might not work in another. So you really have to look at who your patient is, where you're located, how much staff do you have that can help you with each patient. And um, when it comes to patient financing options to make it affordable to everybody since finance and money right now is difficult. Not everybody got their unemployment checks, not everybody got their loans yet. 
we can go to the next slide. But going back to business, there's an actual stimulus program that just started today, and I was really happy to be able to launch it. So I asked Cat Credit if I can talk about it, because it's an easier option, and you could bundle multiple procedures. The way that I personally see it as a consultant is if you're spending more time with each of your patients, you want to make more money. How are you going to do that? Let's bundle a bunch of procedures together, whether it's Botox and filler, whether it's threads, whatever it is, everybody's going to start with the non-invasive, which we'll find out later, but that's what I'm thinking is happening right now. Um, and there's going to be a big rush in for it. And I like the pre-approval process that you can just go on and get somebody pre-approved the night before. So if you're talking about a package that's worth $10,000 or $5,000, and you're not sure that they could afford it, not afford it, you don't, just, you don't know the circumstance right now, get them pre-approved. So when they walk in, you and your staff know what they're approved for, and the approval takes a minute maybe or two. So there's countless ways that you could take payments online for everything that you do. And I love that Care Credit has a website, there's an app being worked on, and you don't have to touch any money, you don't have to touch any credit cards, neither do your patients that have the Care Credit card. Um, it integrates with your EMR and your website. So be sure that you have a link on your website to your patient financing program and that it's integrated with your EMR. We want to make everything seamless and easy. The same thing with the contact and medical forms and cosmetic forms. You don't want people sitting in the office filling out paperwork. Try to get it done before they get in. And this also will help you to ease into um, paperless and uh, you know contactless. Nobody wants to touch anything. When I was just out, I didn't want to even use my credit card. I'd rather you know Venmo somebody some money. So um, I think that um, making it possible to make it affordable is really important. Um, and with the new launch, so what somebody would pay over 12 months, they now could pay over 18 months, which is amazing. So it becomes much more affordable. Maybe it was $400 a month. Now maybe it's $300 a month. That's just a rough figure, but it makes it more affordable. So you work out a plan for your patient, a blueprint to take care of them, and then also how they can afford to pay for it. And of course, you ask them what their budget is and you work around that. So that will definitely help you to close more. And I'd like to introduce um, Dr. Karen Harkaway um, from the Center of Dermatology in Delray, New Jersey. Um, she's a board certified dermatologist um, and she's a fellow of the American Dermatology and American Society of Dermatology Surgery. Um, she's a speaker and a trainer. We've been on many boards together. We've been on many panels together. She's amazing. Um, She's a speaker and trainer also for Allegan and Smallcraft and Biomedical. We met through Thermi years ago, so we know each other a long time, and she's on different councils. And she just started last week, so or this week, actually. So I think, you know, we, we have some questions that we can really um, get answered from people all over the country, as we will today, to provide us with information, whether you're, no matter what stage you're at. So are you at the stage now where you're starting, you're about to start, you've already opened, um, maybe you're a new practice or a new med spa. So um, I'd like to ask Karen some, um, some questions about how it was in your pre-launch and starting, and we could change it to the next slide. There we go. Great. There you are, Karen. Well, hello, and thank you so much. Um, actually, we had been open the whole time for emergencies and for skin cancer surgery, so we were open doing very limited, you know, very essential. There were very, very few people as far as staff goes in the office. And it was during that time, then all the masks became everybody's wearing masks. You know, of course, as I don't need to tell everybody on this uh, webinar, you know, it's, it's just been every single day has been a pivot and a shift. I kind of like your title, you know, you have to that's something I've realized. You just have to be able to move rapidly in, in this whole situation. And we had had scheduled what we call our Butox event, which is a week long time where we only inject Botox and Javeau. Uh, that, those are the only two neurotoxins that I use, but essentially a week of neurotoxins. And this is something we've been doing three times a year. I've been doing it for about eight years. We have usually around 250 people during that time. We've got uh, four providers who are injecting myself and my four PAs. So it was scheduled for this past week that just finished up today. 
And even in, actually, I think the beginning of April, people were calling and asking, are you having it? Are you having it? Are you having it? And although it sounds like, you know, we say it's an event, but it's not like you're standing in line or, you know, it, you're scheduled. And the people are already in because they schedule in January. So that this week is completely filled up. They schedule when they leave from the previous one. So I, at first, of course, I'm like, you know, for God's sake, I don't know. What I, I have no idea. But the month of April um, made us realize that we are seeing emergency patients very safely. We all felt more comfortable. I'm fortunate because I'm in uh, suburban New Jersey and have a very large office actually and, as a dermatologist. And so I have many rooms so I can easily socially distance people. We have a large waiting room, but they can just go straight into an exam room. And as time wore on, we started to think, and people were calling, we thought, you know what, let's just do it. I don't want to be an idiot and, you know, write all about it on social media, you know, come in for your Botox before you've even come in for your total body check. But we thought, you know what, we're just going to keep it as is. And I thought, well, the key is going to be when we call people to, to, to see if they're coming, you know, because of course, the ones who want to come are the ones who called us. What about when we call other people? Are, are they gonna say like, what are you nuts? Oh, no, of course not. Well, as it turns out, here's my staff telling me, Dr. Harkaway, every patient is coming in, almost everybody. You know, of the 250, whatever, there were like three or four that said, even some of those people were on the fence and said, well, let me talk to my husband or this or that. So anyway, it was just this week. Now I did have to make some concessions. There was a time, for example, on Wednesday, we normally have four providers scheduled. I didn't feel that was appropriate that many people in the building at the same time. And we have one of my staff cleaning the rooms in between each patient. I got myself some uh, facial shields as well as of course the, the, you know, the face masks and, and everything. Because I figured even though I've been seeing patients dermatologically, really, if you think about it, injecting is the closest you almost are to a patient. So, I, I did a video just as Cheryl had described. We had a, a big video showing, showing the office, showing the cleaning, showing how large my office is, showing the rooms and the people cleaning the rooms, showing our PPE. I think, and a lot of people said that made them feel comfortable. And I was really shocked, frankly. I think I had fewer no-shows this week than I normally have. And the patients that I, of course, I expected the young ones who just love this and I knew they'd be running in. But even my older patients who are very conservative, they were there, you know, and it was very gratifying. They said to me, I know you, you know, so they trusted me. They know that the office is clean and they knew that I would do the right thing in terms of safety. So I, I can't agree more, Cheryl, that assuaging people's fears by letting them know that you have their safety in mind, both your staff and your, you know, your own, um, your patients, I think go, goes a tremendous way to making people feel comfortable coming in. Now, I also think there's a tremendous pent up demand. No one's been doing anything. Here in New Jersey, we're pretty much still closed. We're gradually opening a few things. Um, you know, I was a little weirded out by offering aesthetics because it's not essentially essential <laughs> to be redundant but oh, right. essential to you right it's, it was essential to them too as we found out <laughs> so uh but like i said I, I and now i've made my schedule going forward for both medical and aesthetic and surgical i'm doing everything everything that i've done before is what i'm doing now but absolutely we are having Ultimately, we, we can't see the volume of patients. And for us in dermatology, that's a big deal, but we can only do what we can do. So we've changed how we're scheduling. I'm seeing fewer patients per hour. We're spreading out our schedule so that we don't have more than two providers in the building at the same time, um, which is of course gonna impact the, the actual number of patients that we can see during like any given week. But I. But I think the demand is there both on the medical and on the aesthetic side for sure. And everybody that came in this week asking about filler, a couple of people asking about like Thermilipo and threads and sclero and everything. So pe people are excited to get back to this kind of thing. And I was a little shocked 
I didn't hear a lot about like money being an issue. That's interesting. <clears throat> it is interesting. And I don't, as you know, Cheryl, but your audience does not, I'm in a very middle-class area. Some people, you know, I, I border wealthier areas and I also border lower class areas. And my patients range from all that whole background. Um, I think a lot of people are actually saving money that they wouldn't have because they have nothing to spend on. They're not going out to dinner. They're not going to this, that, or the other. So they were more than willing to come in and spend it on this. That's great. And was any of your staff nervous and you take them all back full time as they were before? You know, that's okay. So here's where, like, here's where you're going to be pivoting every single day. Absolutely. Some of the staff is nervous. Number one, I realized that I was way overstaffed, not just a little bit, way overstaffed. And I've had to significantly consider now, with, you know, essentially a month and a half of, of being at 10, pretty much 10%, you know, prior to uh, this week of what I would normally do. So even though I did get the PPP loan on the second round, I did not take everybody back. And there's interesting caveats with that, which we can get into if you'd like. I, I First know. of all, you don't need to have exactly the same people. Secondly, um, you, you need to have the same number of, of full-time equivalents and the same roughly money uh, during that the time period for, to get full forgiveness. But to answer your question in a quick manner, I did not take everybody back. Some people don't want to come back because more people don't want to come back because they're getting more on unemployment plus stimulus plus the 600. Right. So that goes into that like- that is a problem across the board. Um, there's no question um, that people are saying, well, I don't have to go back to work. Now the kids are home. So that's a big deal too. Who's gonna take care of their children um, because all the kids are home. Absolutely. Um, but we did, we did get one question just now that I'm reading to you is sure. we only do mainly aesthetic procedures in New York City and have not opened up yet. And we're thinking to open next week. Um, would you email your patients? I mean, the first thing I would say is check with your state laws because the truth is that every state is opening up and New York, as we know, was one of the you know hot spots for a long time and it probably still is. But um, would you, did you recommend emailing your patients? How did you get in touch with them? Uh, we use essentially um, social media for the most part, yes, and constant contact. So whoever's signed up with us for email specifically, as well as in my smaller office, because I have two offices, uh, those who um, had had to cancel, you know, we were able to, you know, reach out to them individually for both medical and aesthetic appointments. And that's what uh, my staff is doing right now. Right. I think also being outside of the city and being in a more rural, you know, location where you are, it's beautiful, but it's very country. Um, I think it's a lot different than it's suburban, you know, Cheryl. My God, it's not rural. <laughs> well, it is compared to this gal who's in New York City. Yes, you know. for sure, um, for sure. So for that, sure. I'm not saying, you know, I mean, you know, I know you have your chickens and your, you know, your horses. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. It's also now. <laughs> So, so basically, I mean, I guess who's coming in now are patients that were pre-booked and they were your, we'll call them VIP patients for, you know, know what you call them. And they were pre-booked anyway to come in for aesthetics. Right. Um, are people calling in and booking on a regular basis now? Are you getting calls yes, uh, for are. cosmetic and aesthetic um, treatments? Yes, yes. And when people come in, are they wearing their masks? Are they nervous? Um, do you, are you screening them on the phone before they get in? Okay, so... Uh, in our state, everybody has to wear masks, but we, and everybody has, and I've gotten absolutely no flack about that. You know, even people who, you know, might not, whatever. Everybody's been wearing masks, no problem. We do have a sign on the door to that effect as well. I don't feel it's appropriate to temperature screen. Uh, that was something that we were doing in the very, very beginning. But, you know, of course, now that we understand that probably 80% of people are asymptomatic, um, you know, that seems ridiculous. I am implementing um, a, a three question or two question questionnaire that I got off of a webinar actually, and it was from the chief ID guy at Mount Sinai in New York City. 
a virologist himself, and it's what they use at Mount Sinai. And so essentially it's a two question uh, questionnaire asking number one, do you have low grade fever, shortness of breath, cough, blah, 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 the usual things. And secondly, um, have you been exposed or do you take care of any, or do you live in a household with anybody that has been exposed in the past two weeks to COVID positive patients? Um, and I wouldn't necessarily, I would probably reschedule someone who has answered correct, you know, answered yes to number one, but to number two, I've already certainly seen several nurses who are one woman this week who was in for her Botox and overjoyed and in her sixties, I might add. And she is <laughs> in the ICU in central Jersey. So even, you know, closer up to New York city where all the, the epicenter is. She's been taking care of COVID positive patients for you know two months now. And I mean, I would certainly treat her even in the beginning when we were just doing emergencies, I said to my staff, we're doctors, we treat these people, you know, but I don't need someone in there that's actively sick, of course. So I would reschedule them. I would still see the other people, but obviously just being aware, just being that much more careful. Um, and I, and then the social distancing. And, and those are pretty much the precautions that we've been taking. When somebody enters, do yeah. they have to call a text? Or they just enter? Does somebody meet them at the door? Does somebody check them? OK, so that's, that's been a funny thing. I feel that we see too many patients, even, even at the lower. If, if we have eight patients in an hour, I can't have my staff texting them all. I just think that's cumbersome. And as I said, I have a large waiting room. So I, but many practices are doing that, many, many practices, and it's a good way. Some people want to wait in their car and okay, fine. But I just, I just thought it would be uh, uh, too much to, you know, have my staff do. So I have them come in, they sign in. If they need to do their paperwork, they can sit in the waiting room. I've made it a rule that we'll never have more than three people in the waiting room. And the waiting room is, is quite large. And how, many, how many chairs do you have? I mean, I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, about half the chairs, you know, just to make it look, you know, social. So well, even at half the chairs, you're probably. I, mean, I have 11 chairs in there, you know, with half the chairs out. So, um, okay. or maybe even more, but but still it's spread out. And, the, and if it gets to be that there's that fourth person, then my MA will have them in a room filling out their stuff. So um, some people don't know what to do as they come in because in other places they have called and texted and whatever. So that's always a little weird. Um, but that is kind of where I am. So did you get tested yourself? Um, my last question for you and Sheena was waiting, but, um, did you get tested yourself, um, yeah. to make sure and to reassure yeah, you? Me, I yeah. just came from an antibody test and I am freaking okay. negative again, which irritates the heck out of me. Because in fact, in March, after returning from a medical mission trip to Guatemala, I had pneumonia. And therefore, oh, wow. I was certain that I was COVID positive. But I've had three tests, one, one for the virus, two antibody tests, and they've all been negative. And no, I'm not testing my staff. Well, please stay with us. We're going to introduce Shino Bay, and then we'll be back for some questions. And um, Shino, um, I am so excited that you joined us today. I know you have a busy schedule and I grabbed you out for 10 minutes. Um, and he is a world renowned leader and, um, and trainer, multi award winners. I've been there when he's won a lot of the awards, dermatology, surgery, cosmetic. He has an amazing laser and, uh, center, uh, skincare center. He does clinical research um, and he's an assistant medical professor of dermatology. And we can go on and on, but we won't. I'll let him talk. And Shino, you look great. I'm so happy that you're on with us today. Um, and, you know, we just wanted to know about, you know, I know you opened this week, so I'm sure there were stresses. Tell us about the, the pre-launch stresses, stresses for yourself, for your staff, for your patients, and what you're experiencing now. Yeah, so the, the first worry for me was really, um, is how am I going to keep the mothership alive, right? Because he bled by 50%. And I didn't want to let go of people. I, I had to for long at the end, but only for, for two weeks. I, I tried to um, to use my resources. I actually end up using my own savings to make sure I keep everybody. Um, for example, to run my practice, we need $102,000 a week 
just wow. for payroll, for everything. So it just so happened that this is the second time I go through something like this, whether it's a hurricane, recession, and I always end up having to make sure that the mothership is healthy. And then we just got approved for the loan. So that's gonna help a lot. So the, that, that was my first worry. And then when we decided that we are about to come in, we needed to also orchestrate how we were going to go about doing that in a way that the patients will feel comfortable in a way that we will make sure that they are safe and also my staff as well. I brought my mother from Panama, so I didn't have to worry. So I also definitely um, don't wanna bring anything home. So this is basically to me, uh, my office is like one of the cleanest places that you can be. We worry more about people coming in and bringing stuff. So the way we do it now is I only can see 50% of the patients that I see. So Pricely, I'm booked and I could be a full capacity if I want to, all my patients want to come back and only they want to come back, I, they want to do multiple things. So it's said because if just the first coming and maybe later two months from now, I'm going to be very, very slow, I don't know. But so far, it looks like I'm going to be very, very busy. I'm seeing less patients, but I'm working harder because we have to orchestrate that what we're trying to do, there's five providers, uh, three estheticians, another doctor, dermatologist, and myself. And we're trying to make sure that patients don't cr pass by each other or even see each other. So we got rid of the front desk. We have no front desk anymore. So the patient, we have an app and they wait on their cart until we tell them that they can come down, the room is ready for them. So by then the other patient has already left and, and the rooms, you know, you've been on my place, I have several rooms. So we're trying to make sure that there's no people anywhere crossing each other and it's working fine for now, you know, at 50%, I don't know as we get busy, we're gonna continue doing this, is it gonna be the same, but we prepare to make sure that we have social distance. Once the patient is in the room, once the patient comes down, I'm sorry, we take the temperature, we do a, a survey, they're not allowed to come in, into the clinic until the temperature is taken and the questions being answered. Once we decide that they're safe to come in, they come in, if they don't have a mask, we'll provide one and then we give hand sanitizer and they take it immediately to a room where they're gonna be waiting for me. Um, and that's what we've been doing when we're practicing and it's been working really, really well. Like I said, 50% capacity. I feel I'm working really hard, but we, we, we're not seeing you know, as many patients, but we're definitely making sure that everybody's safe. And again, these are probably your top flight patients who are from you know, South Florida. They have money. They're anxious to come in and see you. So money hasn't been an issue. Nobody has really said, oh, I can't afford this or I can't afford two Botox and filler and threads today. Just do one. You'd be surprised. I, I, I thought that was going to be the case. I mean, I, mean, I have, you know, I'm Latino and, you know, we have a saying, Spanish women, they love to be beautiful. They love to look young, so they, they will do anything to get their stuff done. You know, they say, they say it's primero muerta que sencilla. Primero muerta que sencilla means I'd rather be dead than look a little bit, you know, <laughs> not to look up to par. So I have patients that clean houses for a living and they're here. They have saved the money for them. It's very, very important. I think it doesn't matter you have money or you don't. Of course, uh, the things that I do, some of my patients, they come once or twice a year to do sculpture and certain fillers that last about a year. And I think because they haven't been able to go out, they're not taking vacations, they're, they're not, they're, they have been able to save a little bit. So when I went through the recession in 2008, mm -hmm. I was very afraid because that was the first year that I went solo. And I got hit, you know, around that with all those hurricanes that came. Then we had a recession and I thought I was finished, but I grew by 64%. So because of that experience, I was very hopeful that it's not gonna be that bad for those who are in the beauty industry because people are never gonna stop caring about what they look like. And when this thing happens, it's bad enough that we all 
having a bad time and people don't wanna on top of that look in the mirror and not look their best. Many people have lost their jobs and we always feel that we're gonna be judged. So if people are going for job interviews or thinking about getting jobs, they're not gonna be with the roots showing and the face. They're gonna do whatever, even if it's just a little bit of neurotoxin or a little filler, so they just could feel a little bit better about themselves. That's what we're gonna be seeing. Major procedures where they, it takes a lot of downtime. People are not gonna be wanna sign up for it because money will be an issue for them, but they don't have time for downtime because you know a lot of people need to find new jobs. Right, and, and that, is, that is a problem. Um, you know, state of Florida, I mean, all you hear is how many millions and millions of people keep applying for you know, unemployment and for loans. Um, but yet I guess right now what the both of you are seeing and what I've been seeing across the board is that right now is that rush to get people in, the VIP patients who have been waiting, who can afford it. I think it'll trickle down a little bit as we said, but the summer's also coming. So there's other things that people might wanna spend the money on now that things are starting to open up slowly. Um, in long-term, if people don't have jobs, they don't have money, they'll probably absolutely need more patient financing options to be able to finance so they could afford and pay it out on a monthly basis. Um, but I'm glad to see that you're up and running. I'm glad to see Karen um, is up and running and um, Dr. Steiger and, and you know, uh, nationally we've been calling um, lots of offices. Um, they're also somewhat like changing their hours. And I'm wondering, have you been adjusting your hours because you're seeing less patients um, and I know you always work a lot of hours, but you're seeing less patients now, you said maybe 50%. Um, so uh, did you change your hours at all? Yes, I have. I used to roll in around 11 in the morning. Now I'm running at night in the morning and I'm staying even later than I used to, than I used to do. Uh, and the later is because I'm doing a lot of teaching webinars and things like that, for trying to accommodate all the places. So I'm coming earlier now at night in the morning so I can see trying to accommodate as many patients because we do have. So that's the reason why. No, which is good. Now, as far as the, um, you know, the PPP, um, when Karen was talking before, we were getting some questions as well as now, but they want to know what you as providers, are you wearing gowns? Um, are you using a shield? You know, obviously it's within that three foot range when you do injectables and fillers and lasers. So uh, people who are, who are listening right now are asking the questions and maybe you can answer and then uh, we'll unmute Karen and she can answer as well. Yeah, well, so we definitely wear masks and, uh, and we're trying to wear like the mask that I use when I do laser and I have one on top of that looks, that looks, it's, it's very dressy and looks nice just because I think it creates, it creates a, a psychosocial problem wearing masks all day. So if we're gonna be wearing it, let's make it fun, let's make it friendly, let's take the fear out of wearing the mask because right now it represents, you know, fear. Um, so we wear that, we are not wearing, we, you know, in my practice, we're not using any disposable guard other than, making sure that everything is really clean and washing our hands constantly and sanitizing our hands and the patient's hands. Um, uh, if I'm doing something that I feel that I need to protect my eyes, we're wearing goggles and whatever people feel comfortable doing, but no special gowns anything to, to protect ourselves on the body. And Karen, what about you? Um, anything special on your end? Well, what we've stopped doing um, is, you know, <laughs> I always, wore a dress and our and my white you know uh coat unless i was doing a, a bigger lipo procedure or something then i would wear scrubs and, and a gown for that procedure but we've all switched to wearing scrubs all the time now and because i do feel it's more sanitary i can wash those after each shift and I think it makes the patients feel a little bit safer. Just, just seeing me garbed differently, many people have commented on it and it, it takes them back, um, it's a little surprise almost, like, but I think they realize that that's for their safety and they appreciate that. And as I had mentioned, um, we wear the masks the whole time, of course, um, but also 
if we're if I'm doing anything very close up, both uh, any injectables, I'm wearing the face shield as well, and p patients do really feel much more secure with that. That's great. Um, and they're also asking about any filters, uh, UVC light, HEPA filters, or such. Are, you, are either one of you using any filters or anything? Um, anything that you feel that we're protecting? Uh, we are about to already the, the, look into the UV lights uh, as well. And everything to just make sure that the patients feel that the, I mean, it's really is, you know, we're doing it for the safety, but a lot is just to make sure that they feel comfortable coming into the practice, right? Because, you know, the way I see it, you know, I try even in social media not to promote fear. When my patients come into the room, I try to have the, the conversation that this virus is here to stay, that we are going to have to become life warriors and how to live taking risk. And they're good because this is going to be the new normal. So I try to spend my time to make sure that they don't have that fear, right? Because it, it, everything in the media has caused so much fear that all they're gonna do is make themselves susceptible. If you wear the mask, 24 seven, your immune system is going to suffer. It's gonna be attenuated. And if you are afraid and you look at everybody like there's weapons, the immune system is also going to be attenuated. So we have to give people now tools to become life warriors and survive this pandemic. Um, so I try to, in the room, educate my patients and make sure that they do what they need to do mm -hmm. to, to improve themselves and align their mind, body, and spirit. It's funny you say that, Chino, because what you have said about this virus is gonna be here with us. We need to adapt and, and to be safe, but we all need to live our lives. And that is precisely what I've been saying to my patients as well. And they've been saying to me, you know, it's part of our great national discussion and debate. And you know, that we are, I suppose the whole world is actually having this entire debate. Uh, and everybody's tolerance of risk is very different, but we are going to have to live like this for at least a year, year and a half. This virus is not going to go away next month. Even if your government, you know, your governor opens up, even if your restaurants are open, whatever, it's the same risk. So everybody has to figure out a way by which they can continue to live a normal life as much as possible while still being safe. No, it's true. It's not easy. I mean, I'm thinking about traveling, you know, to my summer place and I'm nervous. Do I drive and stay at hotels? Do I fly? What happens at the airports? Sure. I mean, I'm nervous. And then nobody wants to see me for two weeks. So I'll have to be stuck in. So I'll be doing more webinars. But, you know, um, and some other question just came in. Um, did either one of you ask your patients to get tested at any point? No, there's too many. I wouldn't do it anyway. Uh -huh. Yeah, I didn't because it really, unless, you know, if if they feel that they had the symptoms, I would suggest you better get tested so you know. I mean, it's a moot point to test patients to come into the practice. And again, it's also the, the, the thing that I go back, creating so much fear. If I were to test patients, if the one patient comes out positive, what's gonna to happen to this practice? You or, or, or somebody in the practice test positive. So if they don't have symptoms, I I, I don't or, or think that they have or there's no need for testing because they could get it's hard to tell where they got it, right? Maybe they got it on the elevator, maybe they got it on the supermarket, maybe they got it at a clinic, but it's so hard to test. So testing should be for anybody that have had uh, an episode of, of a bad call or shortness of breath or losing the sense of smell in the past. And they said, you know, I was really, really sick two months ago. I wonder if I had it. They should be tested. Or somebody that's getting the symptoms, they should be tested. But testing everybody by now, it's just, to me, it's, it's just a waste. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna solve anything. Well, the truth is, because if you get tested today, you don't even get the results in most cases for a few days. And in those few days, um, you might have to have the test done again. Exactly. So there's, there's, you know, that's ongoing. We hear it on the news every five minutes. Um, did you, Shino, um, at any time send out like an email blast to let your patients know that you're back and you're up and running? 
Yes, we did. We 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 did that. And, uh, and uh, again, I don't know about you, Karen, but the, I mean the energy and the rooms and the patient and the gratitude it, it's magical. Even my staff, everything. I'm grateful to be back at work. You know, like it, it's just a really good energy for all patients that have come in. I love it. I agree a hundred percent. I I mean just a hundred percent. Everybody was so happy, so happy. And and the gratitude, as you said, the gratitude. And I'm thanking them and they're thanking me. And then, you know, y'all you want to give them a big hug and then you have to remember that you can't. <laughs> no, it's true. And I think people are just happy to get out of the house and have somewhere to go. True. Uh, and the two of you are so loving and kind and great injectors. So I mean, you know, what's better than that? Um so moving forward, do you see um, the end of the light anywhere with the virus? Or do we think that this is going to be the new normal for the next three to six months, nine months? We don't know what's going to happen. As well, we I said. think it's going to be the new normal for at least oh. a year to a year and a half till we have a vaccine. Wow. Yeah, and I agree. I think if you look at all, all the pandemics, there, there's always going to be probably a second wave. The good thing about viruses is you understand them. They usually, with time, they kind of understand that they don't want to kill their host. So they, 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 be, they don't, they're not as aggressive as we see and they just attenuate. And it may be something like influenza that we're going to have to just be smart about it. But as, as time goes by, it's going to get better. It always has. We just have to be prudent. Yeah, don't. Don't have fear, be prudent, wash your hands is the best thing that I think people should be doing. Because with the mask, one thing that I noticed when I wear my mask is like constantly I'm touching it because it's not feeling well or my glasses <laughs> or my shield is fogging. I'm touching and touching. I'm, and I see people out there, they're constantly grabbing the mask and, and maybe the virus is on the mask now. And then they forget because they get the false sense of security. Washing their hands, I think, out of everything that we can do is for, for the general population is, is, is the best advice. Don't forget yeah. to wash your hands. I agree. I agree. Yeah, and I'm in agreement too. Are there any stimulus packages that you feel you need to offer patients after this mad rush now, moving towards the summer? Do you th are you thinking about any kind of stimulus packages that you can offer? Um, maybe patients, um, you know, like from time to time, we do have offer to patients just for their loyalty. So loyalty patients, loyalty programs, probably. But as as right now, still like we're just trying to fit everybody that wants to come in. I mean, the the, the phone don't stop ringing, so we don't have. But we always do that around the summer because summer sometimes gets a little bit slow. So we're probably thinking about do some patient loyalty programs for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's good. I mean, Karen was just talking about her day of uh, Botox and beauty tox, and um, I think that's great too. And I'm sure she offers specials at that time. Karen, did you, you offer them any kind of specials for their loyalty of coming in on a regular basis? Um, and, well, as I said, that they were already in on that event. So that kind of is our loyalty program right there. Um, yeah, we've been talking about it, but I, I and I'm actually I'm very glad to have learned about the care credit thing. I'm good. I, you know, I took notes on that and I'm going to definitely have that uh, a video or something about that next week in, in our social media. Yeah, but that was, that was actually launched today. So you definitely get in touch with them. Um, and I think, you know, um, definitely take advantage of it because it's going to cost you no money, but you can have patients for the larger procedure. So in your case, maybe it's a lipo. Maybe it's something, you know, with the skin tightening, yeah, yeah. Um, it's combination of treatments and bundling of multiple treatments um, and having them come in on a more regular basis, even like every 30 days to come in to get services done. Um, I know patient financing options don't like memberships, um, but memberships could be a good thing, especially this summer and going into the winter months to offer some membership programs. Um, people love that added value. They love to be VIP or have VIP status in some way and some discount to yep. feel good. And I know that you both um, have a lot of loyal patients. Um, so I would like to thank um, both of you for being here and taking out the time out of your busy days. And I thank you too. And I look forward to seeing both of you soon. Um, and I hope you could log in and join into Beautiful Forever University. We're gonna do 
webinars every week. We'll have different topics. I'll talk to you again to see what topics might be of interest to you. Um, and we are on Facebook Live as well as Zoom. So it's a new combination. So you'll be able to see yourself, but we'll get you the links as well. And I hope to see everybody. Beautiful Forever is offering their own stimulus package, which is amazing. Um, but I think I know what people need. I think they just need to take action, like the two of you took action um, to feel that trans transformation right now. So we put together our stimulus package, which includes two hours of virtual consulting, mystery call to make sure that the phones are being answered right, and a practice evaluation assessment. So we have created that um, along with um, a stimulus package for the book, Beautifully Profitable, um, and it's an ebook, so you could download it and read it this weekend. And the reason that I wrote the um, the ebook, the next slide, um, is really for um, for office meetings. So whether you're doing uh, virtual office meetings or office meetings, whether it's marketing, education, you can use parts of the book, whether it's a section or a paragraph, um, and everything about events is in there and social media and everything that you need to grow your practice to the next level. So whether you're starting up or you're expanding the beautifully profitable book, you could see it on Amazon, but the discount with the discount code is only on the Beautiful Forever website. Um, and um, we look forward to um, seeing you next week. And I really do would like you to fill out the poll at the end, the survey, um, take you 30 seconds, it would help us a lot. And I really would appreciate it. Any comments or questions that we didn't get to today, I am happy to get them answered for you uh, very promptly. And I look forward to being able to talk to you. Um, and I'm happy, um, happy that you joined us today and have a great weekend.